Good morning. morning. Blessed Easter to you. He is risen. risen Oh, it's a fine day, isn't it? Welcome to Grace. Welcome to you who are in the sanctuary this morning. Welcome if you're in the parking lot listening on the radio, and welcome if you're at home taking this in online. So welcome to you all. Blessed Easter to you all. Just a couple of quick announcements. If you take a look at the back page of the bulletin, Uh, Today, we just finished our Easter breakfast. It was breakfast in a box. It was really good. Within those boxes, you have some form of an egg McMuffin kind of egg sandwich, a fruit cup. Uh, You have a muffin. Uh, You have a a juice and milk. And if you would like to take one to go after this service, they have extras. Just go out there and grab. And if you want to make a free will donation to the youth group, you can do that too. But we don't want anything to go to waste. So feel free to take a box home. Maybe it'll be Monday breakfast for you. Who knows? So welcome today. Uh, This is a special day in our lives as uh, Christians, but also in the life of the church. Uh, A day that makes everything else we believe possible because he is risen. Uh, Tuesday through uh, Friday this week, uh, if you see my truck out front, uh, stop in for a visit. If you don't see it, I might be... uh, somewhere else. I might try to take some time off this next week. So uh, Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30, youth group meets here at the church. There's some birthdays listed here. Our April mission of the uh, month is someplace safe. Next Sunday, April 11th, the second Sunday of Easter, we're back uh, at it in terms of Sunday school. We're offering in-person Sunday school, but you can also pick it up online if you want to. Same way with confirmation. We're looking out to April 25th, Confirmation Sunday, so the next uh, two Sundays we're going to be finishing up notebooks and and working on stuff in Confirmation, so if you can make that 9 o'clock Confirmation time, uh, I'll be there to help you finish your material. So uh, also next Sunday, it's Communion Sunday. This is normally we do Communion the first Sunday of the month, but uh, Easter Sunday is here, so we'll do communion next Sunday, and if you are taking this in law, online and want to participate in communion, stop by the church sometime and pick up one of our pre-filled communion cups, and then you can follow along online and, and uh, take that, and we'll deliver to you if you're out in the parking lot also. So uh, anyway, a big thank you goes out to the youth group for doing our breakfast this morning. They did a smash job. It was just awesome. And then uh, also to all those who served and provided food over our Lenten season for our Lenten services and, of course, Sunday morning. Those are the announcements this morning. We open our service this morning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And let's take a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Thank you. 
you pray, singers. Our Easter call to worship is a responsive reading from Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is risen. He is risen Shouts of joy and victory resound. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord is risen. He is risen the Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord is risen. He is risen I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord is risen. He is risen the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord is risen. He is risen the Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The congregation is invited to sing Jesus Christ is risen today, hymn number 151 in the green hymnal, or as it appears on the screen. But the pains which he endured, our salvation have procured. And we touch base with that procured salva salvation uh, done for us each Sunday when we stand before God openly and honestly and confess our need for that salvation and hear of, of his forgiveness. And let's do that right now 
in our brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's promise to us from the book of 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And let's claim that promise together right now. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God's good news this morning. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Join me in the confession of our Christian faith as we confess together the ancient summary of what Scripture teaches about the God we worship, the Apostles' Creed, and we especially appreciate the third article this Sunday where we confess the resurrection of the body. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God's peace be to each and every one of you. <clears throat> A very fitting scripture for this Easter Sunday is Paul's take on the resurrection from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. The resurrection of Christ. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom who are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in Jesus Christ you have triumphed over all sin and death, that we might be raised up, to life, a new life. We pray that this resurrected life may come to our homes, our churches, and our world. 
May we worship the risen Christ, not only with liturgy and song on Easter Sunday, but with hearts, hands, and voices all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Well, it's that time in the service where I'd like to invite any kids to meet me over by the table and chair, and we'll have a message just for you. And we do have fruit snacks, too, if that helps. All right. Oh, we're going to need lots of fruit snacks. All right. Good to see you guys. Well, happy Easter to you. This is a special day. Well, what do I have here? I have a paper chain. And we could kind of think of this paper chain as representing Jesus' life. Now, we know the color green. That's what's happening out there now. The grass is starting to turn green, and the leaves will pop out pretty soon. And green is kind of means life, doesn't it? We plant gardens and we plant crops. And so this green would represent that Jesus was born. We celebrated that at Christmas. Now, what about the next color? What, is, what do you think that represents? Blue is the color of what? Sky. The sky and the water. So Jesus was baptized. Remember, he was baptized. He identified with us. He stepped down into the waters of our baptism and was baptized by John so that he could relate to us. And then yellow, that's kind of the color of light, isn't it? Jesus brought a lot of light into our world. He worked miracles for people. He healed people. He fed people. And so uh, yellow would represent all of the, the really cool things that he did. And then orange, we might think of orange as Jesus' teaching. He taught us a lot in parables, didn't he? He taught us about his grace and his forgiveness and his kingdom. What do you think red represents? Yeah, fire. Okay, fire and... What did Jesus do for us on the cross? He died. he died. He shed his blood, didn't he? He bled. He suffered. And then black. Jesus died, didn't he? So Jesus did all of these things for us. And you know what? We actually have a chain like this, too. We were born. We were baptized. We've heard all about Jesus' great miracles, and we've enjoyed his teaching, his parables. And, you know, sometimes we suffer too, don't we? We bleed. I've got a Band-Aid on. <laughs> I bled yesterday. Uh, so, but we know that even when we suffer, Jesus is with us in our suffering. He understands suffering. And we know the end of our stories, we're going to die someday too. But today is a special day because we're going to add a couple of more links to this chain. And white, what do you think white represents? heaven, new life. I'm dressed in white. You notice the altar, the pyramids are in white. The Easter lilies are in white. So white represents Jesus' resurrection when he conquered death. And so we're going to add to Jesus' life this white chain because he rose, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He's no longer dead. And you know what? Because Jesus rose from the dead, we're going to rise from the dead too. And so we're going to connect Jesus' resurrection to our resurrection today, and we're going to make this chain complete because Jesus promised us that because he rose from the dead, we too will rise. So this is why this day is so important to us personally because Jesus' resurrection is our resurrection. And because he rose, we too are going to rise from the dead, aren't we? So death isn't that scary anymore. It's scary because we were created to live, but because of what Jesus did, because he rose, we too will live. So let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, today we thank you that you not only lived for us, you not only died for our sins, but you rose again for us and conquered death. And we thank you for giving us your sure and steadfast promise that your resurrection is our resurrection, and we too will rise. So we praise and thank you for your great victory this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, thank you, kids, and let's give them a hand, shall we, for coming up here? And daisha has got the fruit snacks.
Well, the title of today's message is No Out-of-the-Way People. And so as we come before God's Word, let's pause for a word of prayer, shall we? Lord, we thank you for the powerful truth, the transforming truth of your resurrection. You are a living Savior, and we pray now that you would grant us faith to receive your Word. Amen. John chapter 20, verses 11 through 16. First, an introduction. She was just another Mary, among so many other Marys. Her only claim to fame and the way she was distinguished from all the other Marys was that she was from a small fishing village named Magdala. The town was small, kind of like the fish that were caught off its shores, just tiny sardine-sized fish used for appetizers. So like her hometown, Mary wasn't a standout in society's eyes. She wasn't identified by a prominent husband or having any children. Everyone just called her Mary Magdalene. Yet her insignificance in the world's eyes was not enough to exclude her from God's kingdom. In this realm, she has a very different reputation. Maybe it was the boredom of growing up in a small town or just youthful experimentation, but somewhere along the line, Mary's life took a turn to the dark side. One day, she just didn't seem like Mary anymore. Something dark had moved into her life and taken over. She seemed trapped under the surface of this new presence that now dominated her life. Glimpses of the real Mary seemed only to be cries for help before she was pulled back down into her now dark, demonic past. The most hopeless and darkest point in her life that she found herself in the presence of Jesus, who came to her and delivered her from her darkness. He confronted and cast out not one, but seven demons from her. Mary wasn't Mary anymore, but this time it was for the better. A new light had dawned in her life, and his name was Jesus. She latched onto her hero and deliverer. She became a part of the group that followed this powerful rabbi. She would follow him anywhere. She was with him as he traveled through Palestine, listening to his teaching about sin and forgiveness, hanging on his words about God's kingdom, watching him heal the sick, feed the hungry, cast out demons, and yes, even raise the dead. Her new life was all she needed. She was now Mary Magdala, follower of Jesus. This meant so much to her, had her loyalty. He was her all in all. She didn't need a prominent husband or children to complete her identity, for when she was in his presence, she was in the presence of God, and everything else paled in comparison to this. The accounts of Jesus' life give testimony to Mary's loyalty to her Lord. So when Jesus began his final trip to Jerusalem and spoke of his imminent arrest there along with his suffering and death, she was not deterred but followed him steadfastly. Without a doubt, her loyalty to Jesus is seen in her presence at the hideous place named Golgotha, at the foot of Jesus' cross. When all but one of the disciples had abandoned Jesus, there was Mary of Magdala, along with Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary the mother of Jesus. Refusing to leave the side of her crucified Lord, she stayed through thick and thin, for how could she leave the one who had entered her darkness to rescue her? She owed her very life to him and believed in his teaching about the coming of God's good kingdom. Everything depended upon him. Somehow he would get through this and continue to be her light and her life. As she kept her vigil with Jesus at the cross, an eerie darkness came over the land, even though it was the middle of the day. A darkness that even enveloped Jesus himself, a darkness that brought back the haunting memories of her past. It even seemed to affect Jesus as he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then it happened. 
Jesus spoke again from the cross. He asked the one remaining disciple to look after his mother. He then said, I am thirsty. And after the soldiers held up for him a sponge soaked in sour wine, he said it. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. He breathed his last breath, and he was gone. He was dead. The darkness never seemed so dark. Maybe it was faith. Maybe it was desperation. Sometimes the two are not all that different. But our text places Mary Magdala at the tomb of Jesus on the first day of the week. She had come there with several other women to finish the preparation of Jesus' body for permanent burial. Even in death, the presence of Jesus' body seemed to comfort her. But when they arrived at the tomb, the stone over its entrance had been rolled away. And to her shock and horror, now even the body of her Savior had been taken from her. She ran to the disciples and made her frantic, panicked report, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and John raced to the tomb to discover the same emptiness. And in their puzzlement, trying to process it all, they left the tomb and went to their homes and left Mary of Magdala at the tomb, alone. So utterly alone, with not even the body of Jesus to give her a grain of hope. Alone. And this is where our gospel text for this Easter Sunday picks up the story. John chapter 20, verses 11 through 16, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher, the word of the Lord. One of the prominent features of John's account of Mary Magdalene at Jesus' tomb is the expression of her grief, her desperation. Three times in this chapter, we hear her desperate plea for Jesus' body, once to the disciples, once to the angels at the tomb, and once even to Jesus himself as she mistakes him for the gardener. Her grief and desperation are so profound that she seemingly looks past the angels and is completely inconsolable in the wake of their puzzlement about her sadness. She even looks past the Lord himself when he repeats the angels' questions. Why are you weeping? Because she is so fixated on what she has lost and crushed by the weight of her personal loss, she can see no possibility of hope. But this is just what is so important about this narrative of little broken Mary of Magdala. Frozen in fear at the tomb and overwhelmed by personal loss, this little lamb of God's love, inconsolable in her desperation and fear, is met by the resurrected Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Her strong deliverer comes to her in the midst of her tragedy with his presence, personally. He calls her by name, and he's been doing that ever since with each one of us. Blinded by her tears and the darkness of her fears, little Mary of Magdala has one other claim to her name, for she is the first person on planet Earth that the resurrected Jesus chose to reveal himself to. That is powerful, my friends. And even though she did not recognize him, he recognized her and called out to her by name, revealing his presence with her and his power for her. 
And this, my friends, is the story of the gospel in miniature. The good news which meets us today, the Lord of glory has found us all paralyzed by fear in the graveyard. He entered our tomb for us, having died in our place upon the cross, bearing the death sentence for our sins in his own body. And by entering our tomb for us, he has shattered that darkness, turning the day of our death into our birthday, into his eternal kingdom, and the down payment for our own bodily resurrection. And in the meantime, as we live in this world and experience its losses and its darkness, he comes to us with his patience and his presence, calling our names, bidding us to trust him, to rest in him. Today, on this Easter Sunday, may you hear the Savior calling your name, for he recognizes you, he died for you, he has risen for you, and he offers his presence and help to you right now, even if you find yourself alone. Standing at the tomb of a personal loss, desperate, frozen in fear, afraid of the world's darkness, he is there. For there are no out-of-the-way people with him. He is here. He has risen. And to God be the glory. Let us pray. An Easter prayer by Scotty Smith. Exalted and resurrected Jesus, we shout a threefold hallelujah this hope-filled morning. For you are risen from the dead with redemptive implications for everything. Because you are risen, preaching the gospel isn't useless, it's essential. Faith in you isn't futile, but fertile. We're no longer encased in our sins, we're fully wrapped in your righteousness. Those who've gone to sleep in you aren't slumbering in the void, but rejoicing in your presence. Because you are risen from the dead, we're less to be pitied than anybody, and more to be grateful than everybody. Your resurrection changes everything. Everything sad will come untrue, and all broken things will be made new. Oh, the wonder and gratitude that fills our hearts today. We are forgiven, we are beloved, and we are yours. So very amen we pray in your resurrected name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Today, we pray to a living Savior who stands ready to listen and to act on our behalf. Let us pray. Lord God, today, we praise and thank you that you have conquered death for us. Hope springs eternal. And Lord, we lift up those who are feeling alone and isolated today. May they know there are no out-of-the-way people with you. You come to each of us in our brokenness, in our loneliness, in our desperation, and you call us by name and offer your presence with us. So be with those now, Lord, who are alone and isolated. Even though they may be sitting in the sanctuary, Lord, they may feel alone and isolated. Grant them your peace, the peace of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are ill, those who are treating the ill. Uh, Lord, we think of those suffering from this pandemic. We think of the health care workers as they put themselves at risk. Watch over them, keep them safe, keep their families safe. We pray also for those who work out on the front lines, giving us the opportunity to buy gasoline and groceries and home repair products and even our medicines, Lord. Watch over them and keep them safe. Guard their families too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, in this moment of silence, we lift up our own hearts to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we respond in worship to what our Lord has done for us and that which we celebrate on this day, would invite you to turn in your hymnals to hymn number 145 or direct your attention to the screen and Let's sing together, Thine is the Glory. Thine is the glory, risen Christ. 
God's blessing to you on this Easter Sunday. Thank you for sharing your Sunday morning with us during this time of worship. Would you please rise? We turn once again to Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Receive the Lord's blessing this morning. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and enjoy the resurrection. God's peace be to each and every one of you.